Good morning, everyone. Tom here. I'm going to go after some diets. I haven't decided if I'm going to make this a series yet, but let's talk about the biggest one that I hear about uh, related to my age and where we are as a society. Um, high blood pressure comes up constantly, all right? Uh, people complain about migraines and, and other maladies. Now, whether they're related to high blood pressure or not, we don't know, but there is a diet called DASH. It's uh, an acronym, which means the dietary approach is to stop hypertension. So essentially, hypertension is essential, which means when, you're, when you get older, you're going to get it. And we're going to give you this diet so that you can reduce your blood pressure. Quick note here. The DASH diet doesn't appear to use too many processed foods, though it does, and I'll explain where. Uh, but if you go from the standard American diet, which is uh, these federal guidelines, they have to be used in prisons and public schools, um, they have to be used in uh, old folks' homes, um, you're, you're looking for trouble when you do the standard American diet. Well, DASH is still a standard American diet, just modified for more whole foods. Now, the minute you switch from super or ultra or any processed foods to a more natural food diet, you're going to automatically help your body at least a little bit, and that does include some blood pressure. But let's talk about the uh, DASH, shall we? It limits sodium. Well, that's dumb, we need sodium. Um, I'm about to do something, and I don't mean to be offensive, but that organ I just stuck at you is our salt detector. That's the thing that tells us how much salt we should be eating per day. There's no maths involved. There's no portions involved. Just follow your tongue. If it stings a little bit, maybe a little too much salt. If it tastes a little bland, add a little more. But do not follow. You must and thus and shall and have a certain amount of salt in your diet. Okay, that's, that's the first dumb thing they say. Um, just a, a side note. Which organ, you know, pop quiz, which organ actually controls your blood pressure? Go. Ding, ding, ding. The kidneys. Look it up. Okay, so here's the diet. You're allowed six to eight gra uh, servings of grains. Let me share with you why you get high blood pressure. Because you eat things that turn into sugar in your body. Sugar damages the endothelial cells of your arterial system, and sugar grabs onto water. It's hydrophilic. It loves water. I've heard anywhere between one to three grams of water attached to one gram of glucose. Fructose is metabolized in the liver, uh, that's not a happy thing, and galactose gets converted into glucose by the liver, if you should drink it. Um, and these six to eight servings of grains, grains are very inflammatory. And that means these grains get into your digestive tract and start punching holes in it and allow bacteria to get in uh, that causes system-wide inflammation of the body. Inflammation is going to lead to high blood pressure. And um, a quick note about why uh, glucose does this. Glucose, again, grabs onto water. And from physics, we know if you have a volume of something, fluid, liquid, let's say blood, and you increase the volume, uh, that is, you increase the amount of liquid, but you don't move the volume, you're going to increase the pressure, all right? So if I have, a, let's say, a stationary tank, um, an air pressure tank, right? And that is a certain cylinder, and I start adding air to it, and add more air, and add more air, and add more air. The pressure is going to go up, but the volume is not going to move. That steel is going to hold that air in place. Air is compressible. And liquid is compressible uh, to a certain extent. And when you add more uh, liquid, actually, um, liquid uh, it, water is actually not, not very compressible. And so when you add too much, you actually cause um, 
your high blood pressure. So all these grains turn to sugar. That's a bad thing. You get four to five servings of veg. Now they talk about green leafies. Fine, you can eat all that you want. If you can tolerate it, that's actually a good thing. Four to five fruits, very bad. Fructose and glucose, and lots of it. Matter of fact, it's just sugar water in a little package. Again, sugar will increase blood pressure. Fat-free, low-free dairy. Uh, fat-free, low-fat dairy, uh, dumb. Have you ever tasted real low-fat dairy without the added sugar? <laughs> Look at the label. Anything you see, fat-free, low-fat. Look at the label and you see, oh, look, added sugars. Yeah, because otherwise it's going to taste like hell. Uh, lean, and I'm assuming red meats, so the driest, nastiest cut of meats, which nobody likes, and you can't salt them because you're only limited to a certain amount of salt. I believe they allow you one teaspoon, that's five grams of salt, which would be 2,300 milligrams of actual sodium, um, I think, or less. Uh, no, if you eat meat without salt, it's horrible. Poultry without salt, fish without salt, an egg without salt, and they give you one egg. Well, that's mighty wonderful of you. Um, they allow you nuts, nut butters, legumes, like beans and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, nut butters, have you ever tasted just a literal nut butter? Like take peanuts, put it in a food processor, and put go and whir it until it turns into a butter and taste that. You're going to be like, oh, it tastes like paste grainy paste. So what do they do? Oh, they have to add seed oils and they have to add sugar. Talk about your blood pressure. Fats, they allow you two to three servings of fats. Uh, margarine, those are hydrogenated guys. That's nasty stuff. Seed oils, also inflammatory, nasty stuff. And dressings, which are processed and are loaded with seed oils. Nasty stuff. Um, and the fats are so limited, you're going to be hungry, friends. Oh, but it's okay. They allow you lots of snacks. And those are like bananas with avocado, with toast, with jam. Oh, yeah. All good old-fashioned hypertensive stuff. Uh, and sweets, limited to less than five per week. So you get a serving a day, but not on Saturday and Sunday. Or if you want Saturday and Sunday, just not Monday, Wednesday and you're allowed one tablespoon of added sugar, oh, guys, that's 15 grams. I'm sitting before you right now. I, I ate uh, 18 hours ago, and I ate zero carb. I had hamburgers and eggs. And I weigh just short of 90 kilos. That's um, 200 pounds for those of you who follow dog ears, um, and I have three grams total glucose going through my body right now, maybe less. Uh, three grams is an average over three months, all right? And you're about to pound down um, 15 grams, plus all the grains, the fruits, the low-fat dairy, and the nut butters that you ate, along with your little salad dressings, which certainly contain sugar. You're, no, look, the six to eight servings of grains alone are 300 grams. I'm sorry, you take a piece of bread, you put it in your face, your body turns it into glucose uh, or fructose if it actually contains sugar in the bread formulation. Uh, but what about the fiber? You don't need fiber. You can't digest fiber. But it's for our gut biome. Oh, you mean the bacteria in your small intestine? You shouldn't have bacteria in your small intestine. If you do, you're sick, go to the doctor, get rid of that. Uh, I didn't say go to the doctor, did it? Yeah, I'm not a doc. You have to go to a doc, I guess. Okay, so go to a doc. Fine. Uh, no, the bacteria is in your large colon, but that's responsible for water and salt. Your kidneys are responsible for salt. Your tongue is responsible for salt. Okay, so uh, sweets, honestly, for high blood pressure. Oh, hi, cat. There's a cat out there. Um, say hi, kitty. You're on, you're on YouTube. I hope you came through. I'm not editing this, so whatever it is, it is. Uh, so my brace just failed. So be it. 
Hopefully it won't snap while I'm doing this. These are the fun of the YouTubes, right? Hang on a second. Let me... There we go. Ah, mucho better. Okay, I'm back. Um, and then, of course, they say, obviously, limit alcohol. Yeah, um, alcohol is actually the fourth macro. And uh, it is broken down by the liver. And um, the, the liver isn't happy. Uh, unrelated, uh, actually, to how I, I, I don't understand the mechanism from alcohol to high blood pressure because I don't drink it, so I don't care. Um, you can look up plenty of doctors, I'm sure. Eckberg, um, Dr. Barry, I'm sure a lot of these docs have information on alcohol and what it does to your blood pressure. And caffeine. Um, yeah, caffeine's a stimulant. Um, actually, it's, it's kind of an interesting way how the, the actual uh, molecule works. Go ahead and look that up. It's fascinating. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it might give you a, a little cortisol bump, which will give you a glucagon bump, which will give you a liver sugar bump. And um, the natural sugar your body produces via gluconeogenesis is just fine. Um, and your blood pressure might come up briefly um, just because of the, the wow effect of the caffeine, but I drink coffee. Well, let me tell you where my blood pressure was when I used to do a diet very similar to this, um, which I started September 10th, 2001. There's an, a very important reason why I remember exactly when I started that diet. If you're American, you will know the date, September 10th, 2001. It was the eve of uh, a pretty miserable time in uh, American life for, for a piece. And I followed essentially this diet to lose weight. And I did. I went from 276 pounds down to 195 pounds in seven months. I walked in the morning on an empty stomach and I would do everything this thing said to do. Uh, the problem is I was 30. I'm not 56. So I told you the standard American diet, if you're healthy and young, will work if you go on whole food standard American diet instead of the processed standard American diet. Um, and it will lower blood pressure for a little while. You can't sustain this. This is why it's called a diet, because it's not a lifestyle. It doesn't say uh, LASH, which would be lifestyle approaches to stop hypertension. Hmm. I'm quoting that right now. I'm going to start the LASH diet. Uh, I have hereby copyrighted it. Uh, if you take it, I'll sue you. No, go ahead. Use, use it if you want. Um, the lifestyle approaches to stop hypertension. I like that. Um, I'm going to get to work on that actually right now after this video. So um, where am I today though? Well, I went ahead and did a LASH diet. So I'm on a lifestyle. Uh, first I went keto and ate some of the veg and then in November of 2021, I got rid of the veg and just went carnivore. And that's where I've been. So I've been carnivore for, let's see, July, August, September, October, for about a year and, and three quarters. Uh, and I was pretty low veg. So I would consider at least ketovore uh, for the entire two plus years I've been on this lifestyle. And I went from, um, I believe it was 125 or 126 kilos, went on to whole food got down to 115 kilos, and then went ketovore, and then dropped down to where I am today. Actually, this morning, I, I rarely weigh myself, but I did this morning for the video in case I needed it. 89 and a half kilos, which is about 196, 197 pounds. So I lost 95 pounds total, going whole food, and then ketovore carnivore. Blood pressure? I have it logged uh, as an average using a cuff, but I'm not really convinced by that. Um, I, I think it's it was rated a little high. It told me I was 117 over 78, but I've used other blood pressure cuffs where I've seen my blood pressure. I had it as low. There was one reading 95 over 55. 
100 over 55, and I think I've had it as high as 110 over 60. But yeah, my average is around 100 and mid 50s to 60. That's where my blood pressure is. I'm 56, guys, 56 years old, yeah. So anyway, that's my idea of the DASH diet. I'm going to disapprove of the DASH diet. Uh, if you want to lose, um, obviously, fat mass and you want to lower your blood pressure, look up websites, look up my own information on my other channel and uh, adopt a keto, ketovore, carnivore diet. And uh, you'll be just like us, millions of people who are reversing chronic disease and obviously lowering blood pressure. Oh, when I started, I didn't give you my, my, my previous, my blood pressure was 145 over 95 when I started that first diet all those years ago. And I imagine it was probably a bit worse um, before I started uh, keto carnivore when I was 54. So anyway, that's that. You guys have a great Sunday. And, uh, you know, like, subscribe, share. Um, I'm not monetized necessarily. I haven't even figured out how to use Patreon. But if somebody wants to let me know how all that works, I'm happy to, you know, get a cup of coffee, which I will be making here very quickly. And, and those run me, I believe those run me about uh, 13 pesos to make on my own, which is about 7 cents. So if, if any of you guys ever want to throw me like 7 cents or whatever, um, I'm in Mexico. I don't, I don't need a lot of money. Uh, life's good here. Um, and, and also, like, point me to how to get on to Patreon and all that stuff so I can actually, like, collect the money or whatever. I don't know. Um, any of you benevolent souls? I have, I have a few hundred subscribers. If somebody wants to share with me how to get that done, it feels like, you know, give me, well, if you're in America, like, maybe give me a dollar or something. I'm, I'm kosher. Life's good. All right. We'll chat soon. Uh, have a great week.